Hello, I'm Andrew Whalen with Clean Air and Sea. On Friday, Governor Cooper announced Executive Order 246, which calls for deeper cuts in greenhouse gas emissions and places a greater priority on environmental justice in future North Carolina decision making. And here to discuss this with me today are Joel Porter and Deja Williams. Joel, give me the rundown. What's in this executive order? Yeah, Andrew, um, happy to. So this executive order builds on the progress that was made under Executive Order 80, North Carolina's commitment to address climate change and transition to a clean energy economy. In that prior executive order, the governor set a goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions 40% below 2005 levels by 2025. This executive order aligns North Carolina's goals with the federal goals that have been set by the Biden administration. So now North Carolina will strive to hit a 50% reduction in greenhouse gases by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Additionally, it goes a little bit further and sets some ambitious zero emission vehicle targets, some vehicle miles traveled reduction targets, and it aligns federal and state funding opportunities to be directed towards environmentally impacted communities, which is a huge priority for us. On the EJ side, this new executive order assigns each cabinet agency an environmental justice lead, and they will be working to develop public participation plans for each cabinet agency. So any action that a cabinet agency takes, uh, hopefully they will now be bringing in community input into their decision making. That's pretty big. Um, and lastly, the last thing that I'd mentioned here is uh, it, it doesn't just stop with this order. So this executive order creates a process for a third party facilitator to be brought in to continue to build on this executive order and take additional action down the road. So that's something that, that we're very excited about and hopefully we can continue to make some progress on environmental justice and help alleviate some of the strain environmentally impacted communities have historically felt. Okay. Um, Deja, how will this executive order impact equity in our state? Yeah, so I think that's actually one of the most important things to highlight in this EO is that it puts equity and justice at the center of addressing climate change and building a cleaner energy economy. Um, and this includes, of course, not only taking steps in reducing pollution and climate change impacts, which we know disproportionately impact low income communities and communities of color across our state, but this also includes bringing those voices to the forefront on policy decisions through the requirement of a more robust public participation process across state agencies like Joel touched upon. Um, and this is really important because true environmental justice is not just about highlighting these impacts of inequities, but it's also about redistributing decision-making power back to vulnerable communities that are systemically impacted by environmental racism. And this is, of course, important because these communities have always faced the brunt of climate change and environmental crises and have had to come up with solutions long before the problem was even visible to mainstream public and policies such as this executive order. So while there can be some improvements to this EO, having community voices included is imperative and a great first step in ensuring that we sustain um, an environmentally justice system. Yeah, Andrew, I think what Deja just said there is a really key piece to that, and that's that this is a great first step. This is a huge win for Clean Air NC, for the, for the environmental justice community in our state, and for these communities, that this will really help alleviate some of that stress that they've felt over the years, decades, generation. All right, a, a great first step. Uh, hopefully, um, foundation for future progress in this area. Uh, Joel? Asia, thank you both so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew.